Hey everybody, welcome to Back at the Ranch. We are at Palmito Ranch, better known as Boca Chica Wildlife Reserve, which is right behind me. So this ranch, known for a lot of things, and you can see there is a bit of traffic right now. There's a lot of action going on to the right of me. Uh, but this ranch, over 150 years ago, is actually the location of the last Civil War battle fought. And believe it or not, the irony of that is that that battle was fought after the Civil War ended. So uh, Robert E. Lee, General Robert E. Lee, actually had already surrendered. They didn't know that here, and they still fought the battle. And believe it or not, they won, right? So the Confederates won this one. But uh, interesting fact about this area also is it's the home of the ocelot, which is an uh, almost extinct species. You still see ocelots down here, but not very many. And another interesting fact, about eight miles south of here is the Rio Grande River, or as they know it in Mexico, is Rio Bravo. Just across from the Rio Grande River is actually what's called a uh, rocket ranch. So have you heard of rocket ranch before? No? Didn't think so. So Rocket Ranch is actually in Mexico. It's a, a campsite and it's known for something. Um, the reason it's called Rocket Ranch is you can actually see some cool things from there. Like this thing. What's this thing over here next to us? Rocket? Rocket. Well, it's a launch pad actually. So uh, this area actually just made history not too long ago. That is the SpaceX launch pad that a few days ago actually launched one of the largest rockets, excuse me, the largest rocket mankind has ever made. So we are here hundreds of yards away from the launch site. It's pretty cool. You can actually come down here, park on the side of the road, not too far from there. But uh, we were going to park out this way, decided not to because they are cleaning up. If you haven't watched that, go check it out. It's pretty cool, but on this side, what's on that side, Jasmine? Um, SpaceX? SpaceX, right? So that's uh, SpaceX uh, home base or star base, as they call it. Um, you've got Rocket Garden over here. They've got some of the rockets that they're building, some of the boosters, and we're going to drive past that here in a second. We already drove past that. I'll throw those clips in. I'm going to drive past here, and I'll have Jasmine uh, do a little bit of recording out the window for you. But there's something else that this area is known for and that's this side on the opposite side of this you actually have south bay south bay is one of my favorite places to go because what do we do in south bay fish we fish right and what's on the other side of south bay south padre island south padre island so we've got some fishing in store for you guys today jasmine now actually said uh when are we going fishing dad let's go today what better time to go than today, right? Why wait? So it's a nice, beautiful day, a little breezy, but uh, we're gonna drive through here, go around the uh, port of Brownsville and make it on over to South Padre Island. And we're gonna fill up a Ziploc bag or two of just some fish fillets. We're gonna clean those up for you and cook them as well. So what do you say we get going? Yeah. Yeah? I'm excited, how about you? Yeah. All right, well, we'll see you guys back at the ranch. Well, we made it to South Padre Island. We are going to get our fishing poles set up because we only have about two hours worth of daylight, which is a perfect time to fish. It's actually high tide. I can see SpaceX from here way over there and way over there. So we went all the way around. So we're about to get this started. So I was talking to Jasmine on the way over here and said, you want to try and catch big fish or you want to try and just fill up a Ziploc bag? She said, 
let's fill up a Ziploc bag. So we're gonna do perch and whiting today. And we fill that up and maybe we'll chase something bigger. So we'll see you on the rocks. Okay, no bites here. Do you want to go further down? Yeah. Okay. I still got the same piece of shrimp here for 10 minutes, so they're not here. Time to head out. Okay, so this fishing trip didn't go quite as planned. Um, we caught the target species, but only two. Good news is I've got some more at home. So we were after pinfish, which are typically used for bait. The reason we were after these pinfish is Usually you catch a bunch of them, no problem. Just cast, pull, cast, pull, cast, pull. But I'm gonna show you real quick what I do with these. Believe it or not, this is what we eat. Um, anytime we wanna fill up a Ziploc bag, this is a second one, by the way, that I caught. Uh, these are the only two that we caught, and we've been here for about two hours, which is pretty insane. Um, nice little slice right here, just fillet like any other fish. Right. Hopefully I don't massacre this thing. It's been in the ice for a little while. Right there. There's your fillet. No. Other side. Pretty much do the same thing. And I just massacred it. Let's see if I don't cut my finger now. I'm trying to show you guys how to do this. Usually don't talk and do this at the same time. You got a fish or you got a rock? No, I have a fish. You have a fish? Yeah. Okay, we got a fish. I'll be back. All right, let's see what you got. A gaff top. No, I think you got a hammerhead shark. What? You're joking. <laughs> no, nah, it might be a gaff top. Let's see. Yeah, you got a little hammerhead shark. Seriously, Look at that. Get away. <laughs> I seriously got a hammerhead shark. You got a hammerhead shark. Actually, Take a it's a shovel. Of it. It's a. Here. Are you oh, serious? he's tangled up good. I'm going to have to cut this off. I so, just got a hammerhead shark. What do you know? Didn't catch anything this whole time and you catch a shark. I gotta take a picture of it. Here, let me let me cut it all off. Come here. Oh my goodness. That's why it was so pull, hard to bring in. Pull the line taut. That's crazy. Line it up. I mean pull it up. Okay, reel it in all the way. But look at that. Jasmine's got it herself, a little shark. We have to throw it back, right? Yeah, we gotta throw it back. You gotta get a picture of it. It is way too small. That's crazy. I think they need to be at least three feet to keep. Oh, we lost the weight. Went straight down. Let's see if I can uh, unhook that's these. Crazy. Can you reach over here and I can't grab. Oh, I got him.
Come on now. Come loose. There you go. Let's drop that down there. All right. You want to hold him? <gasps> no, thanks. No? No. You don't want to hold him? Here's no. your shark. Okay, take your picture. And I'm going to throw him back in the water. How do I take my picture? Just take a picture. Sorry, we get it on video. It's even better than a picture. Did you show like me reeling it in? Yeah. Oh my goodness. All right, dude. <sighs> That's my bye first bye, time shark. catching a shark. First time catching a shark. That was cool. I that, had a shark on my line before. That, that's a great way to end this. So, <laughs> and by the way, give me a high five for that. Hopefully that made your night. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. You can come stand over here right next to me if you want. So next, little tiny morsel right there. That usually would be bait, but we're tossing that back today. There you go right around the bones rib cage get as much meat as you can another little tiny morsel and those are your fillets so a lot of people look at that and say really you're gonna eat that yeah we eat that so again usually when uh, perch are biting I mean you can catch them by the hundreds every cast would be a perch and we'll fill up a, a ziploc bag pretty pretty darn quick but today was a sad day we only got four little fillets so we got a couple of them at home that are full all the way to the top so we'll get home tonight tomorrow we'll thaw out what we have in the freezer it's a little cook for you so we caught them we cleaned them and technically we're gonna cook them so we'll see you guys when we get back to the house I hope you guys can hear me it's getting windy out here we're uh, back home we were going to do a little fish fry here in the chill spot, but we got a, a big storm rolling in. Actually, it's covering most of Texas from Brownsville all the way up to Houston. So this fish fry is not going to happen outdoors. You hear that? We're going indoors. Okay, everybody. So welcome inside. This is the kitchen. This is our kitchen. So that rainstorm actually already passed through rain for about an hour more or less it was pretty insane i started getting weather alerts tornado warnings high wind warnings it was pretty crazy uh, i started getting alerts from south padre island believe it or not apparently there was up to 80 90 mile per hour winds gusts uh looked at live cam for uh spacex and it was pretty nasty so good thing we went yesterday and not today but uh, like i said today you know we're gonna do the cook portion of this video Unfortunately, we're not going to do it outdoors. It is uh, still too wet and uh, my fryer is an electric fryer so that that's not ideal. Water and electricity don't quite mix. I started thinking about, man, if I fry indoors, that's going to stink, stink up the place pretty much. So once you, once you cook fish fried, that'll stick around for quite a while. So I decided, you know what, we're going to skip the fry and we do one of my specialties. One of the things that my kids, my mom, my dad love to eat. Uh, anytime we're out at the island, staying at the RV park, they say, Hey, Miko, can you make the rice and fish? So that's what I've got for you. So I've got all the ingredients behind me here. But before I get started on that, I want to show you something. My parents actually have chickens. They don't have a ranch. They don't have a farm, but they've got a, about an acre, acre and a half property. My mom came by earlier and dropped off some fresh, fresh eggs from her chickens isn't that beautiful so we still gotta wipe these down a little bit um might leave them like that for a while but we got a, a few dozen here so we're looking forward to enjoying those another day and i think uh my two older kids are in town today they've been here for the last couple of days actually they might take those with with them and uh, we'll get some later but let me show you what we got behind us and show you how i do rice and fish all right, so I do apologize for the camera angle. I can only run one camera with this microphone and the other cameras actually are not charged up. So here's what we got. Small little pot that you can boil and prepare your rice in. We've got one cup of rice, two cups of water. Put some oils and other stuff over here. You can uh, use olive oil, you can use corn oil, any type of oil you want. I'm actually gonna go with something a little different. I really like that bacon flavor, so I'm going with bacon grease today. So what do we do? Quite simply, get that fire started. Let that warm up a little bit. 
and uh, get your oil ready. So again, I like to use bacon grease. Uh, anytime we make bacon, which is not too often, but we do make bacon, we save the grease in, in this container here. And uh, I'm just gonna add like teaspoon, give or take. Let that melt, warm up. Mmm, that smells great already. So once that's warmed up a bit, as you can see, it's already starting to, to burn a bit. Um, bacon grease does burn real quick. Just, just add your rice. So we are going to fry this rice here. Get it nice and coated with that bacon grease. You want to watch this rice. You just want to brown it. Make sure, uh, be careful not to burn it. And again, this is one cup of rice. The ratio is going to be two to one. Actually, I used to eat do a little bit less than a cup, just a hair. Um, that way when I add the two to one or the, the two cups of water, there is a little bit of extra water so that we can steam the fish. So you'll see what I mean by that in a bit. So I'm gonna brown this up for a couple of minutes. And I'll be back, right back with you. Okay, so now we're nice and brown, keep stirring. And uh, I like to remove it from the fire at this point. Let's see the second. If you hear any background noise, the kids just showed up, so I apologize. And now we just add a little bit of that water. And that vent on. Put that on the bottom. Now we the rest of the water. So bring that back to the fire. This water, by the way, was already warm. Took it out of a water dispenser that has a water heater, so we're gonna get to oil pretty quick. At this point, I start adding my spices. So, what do we got? This is going with fish, lemon pepper. Add to your liking. If you like a lot of lemon, go ahead. I like it quite a bit, so I'm going to add that much. It's a good thing that. It's a lot. Up next, we actually have a garlic jalapeno rub. About the same, maybe a little bit more. There we go. And we'll toss in a little bit of onion powder. Got uh, tomato bouillon chicken flavor, so caldo de tomate, pollo. Well, that's gonna be mostly good flavor. And I got one last touch, and that is romino, cumin. Just, just a little tad, just, just a little bit. So that's a one quarter uh, tablespoon scoop. But you notice that I've got less than a fourth of a fourth, so that's what, one eight. And that's it. That's your spices and add to that. Stir it up a bit. Get those ingredients mixed. Let that come to a boil. Okay, we're starting to boil here. So I'm going to stir it up just a little bit more so it doesn't stick at the bottom. I'm going to shut that off. Turn in, turn on my uh, simmer in the back. Move that to a simmer. Cover it. Set a timer for about 10 minutes. Okay, so while that is simmering, the rice over here, let me get the fish ready. So. Yeah, there's our sad catch from yesterday, four little fillets. Already rinsed them off. Put these in the bowl over here. 
And I was looking for more perch fillets. Apparently we've eaten them all. They're actually a, a lot tastier in my opinion than most other fish. But I did find this Ziploc full of uh, whiting. So we have a Ziploc of whiting. I'm gonna go over, I don't know, six or seven fillets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think seven will do because my kids are actually leaving now. I heard the door slam. So this is gonna be my wife and I. That should be plenty for us. We'll set that aside. And uh, I'll show you what we do next as soon as that rice is ready. All right, 10 minutes have passed. We still have a little bit of liquid in here. I'm gonna pull that off the fire for a second. And again, I apologize for the background noise. I'm just gonna take these fish now, just lay them across the top, just fillets. There goes one from yesterday. Probably could have used a bigger pot. There we go. Now I'm just gonna add just a little bit more water. Alright. I'm gonna hit that fish now with that garlic jalapeno rub. Put that back to simmer and leave it for another five minutes. Okay, at this point, turn it off. Simply let it sit. Let it sit for a good 10 minutes. That fish will keep on cooking. The rice will absorb any of the remaining water. And we'll open it up and reveal in about 10 minutes. Okay, our 10 minutes are up. Time for the reveal. Check that out. Doesn't that look delicious? So let's get a little bit of this in to this bowl here. Some of the rice, some of the fish. I'm actually going to serve three bowls because I think someone else wants some. So who else wants rice and fish? I'll have some. How about you, Jasmine? Yeah. Yeah. She's busy doing her nails. She's a little distracted. So there you go, rice and fish. All right, well, there we have it, rice and fish. Jasmine, you ready for some? Yeah. Yeah? So Jasmine doesn't have a mic on, so if you can't hear her, I apologize, but dig in, let me know what you think. Mm. What do you think of that? It's good. Would you do it again? Was it worth the whole day to catch two fish, even though we had some in the freezer? Yeah? Maybe next time we'll fill up a couple of Ziplocs. But I'll tell you what, guys, don't click away yet because I got a little slideshow for you afterwards to show you some of the fish that Jasmine's caught, I've caught, my wife's caught, and some of the other kids caught, as well as Grandpa. Grandpa got himself a nice big bull red. So thanks for hanging around this long. I'll see you next time when we're back at the ranch.